Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to my game spotlight covering Redirection. Those of you who are fans of Computercraft, a mod from Minecraft, might be familiar with the name Dan200. He's the guy who created it. He created his own game, fully fledged game, available now on Steam. I want to show you guys what it's about. Uh, full disclaimer, Dan's a friend of mine, so he's a cool guy, I like him, and I want to help him promote his game out a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys what the game's about. I think it's a lot of fun. I also think it's really cool. So I hope you guys enjoy checking out what Redirection is all about. At its core, Redirection is a puzzle game, and it's a really fun one at that. Uh, but there's a bunch of other cool stuff you can do. It has its own built-in modding system, fully fledged. You can make all kinds of cool stuff for the game, a bunch of scripting stuff. But we're going to take a look at the core game itself first, and then we'll jump into what's possible if you're the creative type who likes to create things. And it's really pretty neat. So let's go ahead and take a look at the core game. The core game is broken down into several different categories of levels. There's a bunch of different levels. I personally have not completed them all, but I've played several. So let's go through some of the tutorial levels just so you can get an idea of what the game is all about. I'm going to skip the storyline for you guys. You can read it when you get in there. So it says right now, time is paused. And if we hit the play button, we can see what happens. So pretty much your goal in this game is direct the robot to the X. It's really pretty simple. When we hit play here, we'll kind of see what happens. The robot moves forward, and then he's going to get stuck and turn around. So clearly we did something wrong. He's never going to get to the X. So we can rewind time and get back to the starting point. Luckily, the computer that uh, controls this board here has access to a teleporter, and we can teleport in obstacles to help guide the robot. Now, when we start time up, the robot is going to run into that obstacle, and he's going to make his way into the path. Pretty simple. It's level one. Level two is a little bit different. Which way is he going to turn? Well, that's the thing. The name of the level is left hand rule, so we can assume that he's always going to turn left. And that's a fact. He will always turn left when given an option. So let's rewind time and see what happens when we place an obstacle here. Ah, much better. As you might expect, the levels get a little bit more complicated. So now we've got to rescue both robots, but we also have access to more than one obstacle. Remember, the robots will always turn left. Had he turned right, he'd probably fall into that bit of acid. As the game progresses, you'll run into some red-colored robots. They have different rules, specifically the direction that they turn. This robot will always turn right. So once you run into the red robots, red robots turn right. As you can see, the challenge is a little more than meets the eye. It should also be noted that this is one of the first levels that has a ramp. So this robot would not be able to go left here because there is no ramp. So even if we did go ahead and let him go down that path, he gets stuck. By the way, I'm also demonstrating the fast forward button for you guys. Now you might think that it's as simple as placing another obstacle up here, but as you can see in the top left, I've only got two total obstacles that I can place. So the solution is probably something like this. Not bad. As the game advances, you're going to run into some more challenges. For example, how could we possibly solve this puzzle? He's either going to move forward or backwards, or he'll get stuck here. We need him to move forward and then eventually come back and turn left. Luckily, there's the option to add delays to your obstacles. The tutorial here is telling me to add a delay of four. This means that the obstacle won't be teleported in until four seconds into the round. That's why this timer at the bottom left here is very important, so you can see when that timer delay should kick off. As with most puzzle games, there's a couple different ways to solve any problem. Here's one of the solutions to this level. There's probably a more efficient one. Eventually, more tiles become unlocked as you progress. These tiles, for example, are teleporters. When the robots pass over them, they're teleported up into a different location. Here's a lock and key mechanism. When the robots pass over the key, it opens up the lock. 
However, they have to pass in the correct direction. Passing in this direction will not work. It has to be from the lighted up green arrow going forward. Let's see what I mean. Did not unlock the door. And it did. So as mentioned, uh, there's a lot of levels. I've only completed maybe 40, 50 of them, give or take. Uh, and there's plenty more to do from what I can tell. Um, so there's a ton of levels. There's some cool cutscenes. There's a whole storyline going on here that I've been trying to keep out of the videos because I want you guys to discover the story for yourselves. So playing through the game, you'll discover the story of where these robots are and why they're there and what they're doing. So that's pretty cool. Now, one of the other things I'd like to show you about is another aspect of the game, and that is creating your own levels. So if you're the creative type who likes to go in and make your own levels, totally doable. You can create your own mods, which is really cool. Mods are not just levels. Well, let's create one called Direwolf 20's Mod. Sounds like a cool name for it, right? So once you've created a mod through the menu there, there's a couple things you can go on to do. Let's start with the most basic one, which is creating your own levels. From here, you can have as many levels as you want in the mod. All you have to do is hit Create New. Nice, and you're given this nice little tile board. And you can place blocks pretty easily in the map. So you can hold left click to place blocks, shift left click to remove blocks, uh, left click and drag, as you can see, removes a bunch of stuff or adds a bunch of stuff. And then you can kind of expand from there. Um, you can right mouse button to look around. Um, and then if you wanna choose the current block that's under, you can do middle click. There's a bunch of controls for this um, that you can go ahead and check out. Left click tiles on the sidebar to uh, change them. So for example, if we wanted to have the robot here and we wanted to have uh, the exit there, this looks like the easiest level in the world to complete, uh, but it should be pretty straightforward. Nice, right? And then we just uh, map this off. Oh, that's not where I want those pieces to be. Cool. And then you can hold out or you can click right click on the side here and you can see all the different tiles that are available as part of the game. And you can see there's multiple tiles. You can also add your own tiles, which is really cool. So at some point you'll probably be able to add, you can add right now, but at some point you'll probably want to add your own tiles with your own mechanics. And there's a whole scripting language, which surprise, surprise is built on Lua, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you want to add your own custom tiles, it's totally possible. Uh, but remember, we checked out teleporters before, and we also checked out things like uh, the lock and key switch. So pretty neat stuff. And then you even have the option to test your level. So we hit T, and you can test what the level looks like. Well, that was easy. Up on the top right, you can name the level. So we'll call it Dire Level 1. Cool. And then uh, save it and then back to the menu. And then if you wanted to add more levels, totally doable. So Dire Level 1, right there, we can open it up, and we can even test it and go on from there. Neat, right? You'll notice on the uh, options here in the menu, Open User Guide, this will pop up uh, a website over at Steam to show you how to go through this. There's a lot more detail over there, so if you're interested in making some of your own levels, totally check it out. Capture Thumbnail, that's what you can do to click. And then, yep, that sounds cool. Now when we save it and go back out to the main menu, you'll see the thumbnail of the level on there. Cool, right? And then edit script, reload level. So what's that all about? Well, let's try out edit script. You'll notice that when you click edit script, it opens up the script that runs while you're playing in this level. So this was level one. You'll notice the file name at the top is one.lua, and it is a Lua script, which is no big surprise to anybody who's played computer craft. Uh, and you can see here, it just tells you very simply, um, if you want the dialogue box that pops up when the game starts up, you can edit the uh, show dialogue message right there. Pretty neat. Now, obviously, you can make a much more complicated script, and uh, you can go to the link that's shown there. Uh, the Steam community file that gives you more information about some of the other things you can do with scripts, but this is just a basic example. So let's uncomment out these lines. There we go. Uncomment out the lines, save the file, that's all there is to it. Now let's go into the game and see what's different. So let's see what happens now that I edited that script. When we go into the level and hit T to test, all of a sudden the captain's talking to me and saying hello world, which is the exact text that I had in there. Obviously, the scripting mechanics expand and you can do a lot of other cool stuff with it, but that's probably outside the scope of the spotlight. 
So how much can you do with the mod editor aside from just adding your own levels and scripts? You can add new textures, new tiles, new sounds, new music, new backgrounds, and even new cutscenes and animations if you really want to go crazy. Pretty much everything in the game is moddable, and there's already a handful of mods going up on the Steam Workshop, which you can easily browse. Uh, and once you've gone ahead and grabbed some, you can go ahead and play with it. And finally, there's the Robot Arcade. This is pretty neat. The Robot Arcade basically gives you access to a bunch of little Lua games. They unlock as you progress through the story, so don't expect them all to be there the moment you open the game. But you can check out, there's Space Invaders, Tetris, Worms, pretty cool. And you can play uh, little Robot Arcade games in-game. These are also Lua scripted, and you can write your own arcade games if you wish. How cool is that? So that about wraps it up for the game spotlight on redirection like i said written by a friend of mine dan 200 definitely recommend you guys go over to steam just take a look at it um it's a lot of fun i've had a lot of fun playing this game and uh i've poked around at some of the mod editing stuff and there's some really neat things you can do obviously the little simple level i created is not interesting uh but you know there's tons of cool stuff you can do um the main base game is a lot of fun. There's a ton of levels. Like I said, I haven't even completed them all. Like this is about as far as I've gotten. I haven't completed any of these, but you can see things get really complex as the game progresses and it requires a lot of thought and you know figuring out you know the best way to do some things. So Redirection, really fun game, now available on Steam. Check the description of this video for a link that'll point you over there. For now, Dial20 signing off. Take it easy.